Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I know, I know, we talk about <laughs> things that interest us, that we find fun, partially exciting, sometimes really exciting. This week, no exception, I'm Vin Stone, that's Joe Bryant, everybody watching us yeah. live on Twitch. Hello, or after the fact, you're watching the VODs, listening to the podcast, we're there in your ears, possibly in your eyes. So me and Joe were having a long, drag down. <laughs> obscenity laden fight in the pre-show no. <laughs> trying to dunk on each other man uh, go Aww. back and listen to that if you're a patron but um, yeah she Jill's just like pure team red she's like hey we can do no wrong ever how dare you but just smirch the and I was like I, I don't know because you know like a lot of you at home mm-hmm. I, I was paying attention about the 4060 Ti release because I think maybe, maybe just more out of curiosity because they did the thing again, right? I say this is somebody with a 3060 12 gig. And I was like, that's weird. And I'm like, ooh, 12 gigs, I'm on that. And I have good reasons. It wasn't for gaming. And with the 4060 Ti, they're like, yeah, we're going to make a 16 gig version. I'm like, that's silly. Maybe I want that. And no, <laughs> I, I really don't. Um, all the reviews, they're like, that's oh, a Y card. And um, then... AMD finally figured out what day people could release and the embargoes and all that. The 76 series came out and the reviews have come out about that. We, and Jill's like, you need to go to the authority, <laughs> Linus, no. from Linus Tech The Tips. squeaky one. <laughs> and you know what? You know what? We found two benchmarks where the 7600 was able to outperform the Hark A770. And, uh, and that was my whole point. Not, I'm not picking on any particular card in particular. I'm going, man, mm-hmm. just in the entire GPU market as a whole, when you're reminded that the RK770 was made to compete against last generation's low wind. Yeah. <laughs> and here we are as consumers. I'm thinking about all of us. I don't care what team you're on. Okay. I don't. I'm thinking about us as a whole when I say this. We should be in better shape than this. Because these current products from everyone, they're not moving the needle. They're yeah, just, they're just rehashes of last generation. <laughs> and it's hard to get excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And I don't know. I don't know. Let's just remain ever hopeful and keep our pinky toes crossed. That maybe Intel will do something with Battle Mage, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> something to look forward to. Yes. Something to look forward to. So you were Jordan last week. Oh, I sure sure was. And thank you, Jordan, for filling in for me last week on LWW while I was sick. Yes, I was I was out sick with something very strange. And my Steve husband is also healing. He had something very unusual. Which I should probably talk about too much on the show, but <laughs> he had something unusual. We both had something unusual. So, but we're over it and we're getting better. <laughs> well, we're not completely, completely over it, but we're getting better. <laughs> Aw. And then I also had fun uh, playing Hogwarts Legacy. That has, I, I'm a little late to the game on that one, but I finally. <laughs> I put down the uh, 60 bucks and got a copy. <laughs> so that's and what you've been doing past week. Got it. Yes. Like, that's I'm, what I've I, been I, doing. I'm sick. I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go back to playing my video games. <laughs> oh, Steve Husband said unusual sounds even worse. Well, it was kind of worse than your average cold and flu. So I guess we have that. <laughs> I don't know. He, Steve is on antibiotics. Yeah. Heavy antibiotics. That's it. I mean, everyone survived. Mm-hmm. End of story. Yeah. Don't worry yes, about it. Yes, we did. <laughs> Any day you get up, you get another shot at it. That's the way I look at it. Speaking of other shots of stuff, mm-hmm. version 7.0 of Bodhi Linux is, uh, well, it's almost out. Not really. Yeah, out. it's almost They're thinking out. thinking about putting it out. Yeah, this is the beta. And I wanted to revisit this distro again because I, I used to run it like full time for a few years. I, I ran Bodai. So I wanted to re- revisit this distro. And it is one of my favorite distros. And there's a new beta ISO ready for testing, Bodai Linux 
and it's based on Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. It uses actually, and this is what's cool, it used to use just Enlightenment, but now it's using the Enlightenment-based desktop um, and the Moksha window manager by default, which is actually a fork of Enlightenment and is a, is a bit cleaner and better organized version of Enlightenment. I think Ven would like it better too. <laughs> well, we got like boat high. Let's uh, let's band <laughs> together as a team and create bow by. <laughs> bow by. <laughs> Bovi. <laughs> and uh, some of the new features, there's a, a new Plymouth boot screen and a new login screen theme. And the distro actually now uses a new Moksha green theme and icon set by default, which is actually really beautiful. It's, it's a nice dark theme with grays and greens that matches the green leaf wallpaper. And it, it, it looks very beautiful. And that, and that's, one of my favorite things about Enlightenment and its forks. <laughs> Enlightenment is just so classic, beautiful, and retro. <laughs> and the Moksha theming actually includes lots of improvements, including there's a new key bindings viewer, refactored modules, new window snapping options. And the settings panel uh, dialog has been resized to 600 by 500 by default for easy, easier viewing, which is nice. It used to launch really, really small. <laughs> and the module tweaks now include the battery module relaying, relaying charging status better, the clock module adding date time settings. Yes, we finally have date time settings in the clock module. And the shot module adding copy to clipboard. So you can copy your screenshots to clipboard. And it what's really really interesting about this version and and one thing that got me really intrigued is that the Bodai Linux 7.0 beta also ships with a non-snap build of Chromium as the default web browser but also includes a web browser manager app to install other browsers and Bodai has been doing that for years but I was happy uh, uh, has been including a, a browser manager for years but I I was happy to hear that they're bringing in the non-snap Chromium which is just really cool. And the other unique thing is there are three kernel releases available for download. The base ISO actually offers Linux kernel 5.15 LTS as shipped in Ubuntu 22.04 LTS last April. There's an ISO with the more recent Linux kernel 5.19 from Ubuntu 22.10 for better hardware support. And the one I downloaded and had fun playing with, a System76 ISO that pulls in the Linux kernel 6.2 version used in System76 Pop! OS. So yeah, it, I just had a lot of fun and it was really nice having an up-to-date kernel, more up-to-date kernel. So, and Bode Linux actually came out in way back in 2011 and I'd been using it way back then. And it has always been a great distro to run an older on older hardware because it's very memory efficient and the and the lightweight enlightenment window manager is a very lightweight uh, window manager slash desktop manager. <laughs> Some people now consider it a desktop manager. <laughs> and it's just a really, really smooth experience. I was really impressed with how quick the install was. I, I was amazed. And I was actually testing this on a, a virtual machine and it installed in like three minutes. <laughs> I was very impressed with that. And I think I'm actually gonna go ahead and install it as one of my operating systems here on my broadcasting uh, rig when the, the stable version comes out. So I was really impressed. <laughs> Who's it meant for? I mean, it's got uh, enlightenment, so you can't use it yes. as a workstation. <laughs> I'm I'm wondering now that it uses uses the uh, Moksha window manager, then if that would have improved. I don't think the window manager was what was crashing enlightenment. Man. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I know audio was sometimes an issue with the enlightenment audio driver and and all that, but it it it's. It uses Pavu control now as default, which is nice. <laughs> Enlightenment, I love you. You're just not stable. <laughs> 
all I'll say about that. System 76, that's a weird thing. Yeah, this has been around for yeah. a long, long time. I've been, uh, if you watch the video version, I've been playing around with their uh, app center, seeing what they got. Some of it seems a little bit on the dated side. Some things need to be updated. I'm absolutely going to say like multimedia mm-hmm. production. One thing I'm not seeing in here uh, is KDE and live. Oh, yeah. Okay. But we have yeah. open shot and that falls into the category of glaring ambition because <laughs> well listen, you know i'm not a huge yeah. fan of uh, any particular one over another but like if you're going to be doing video editing under linux like i'm going to point you at KDN and live because that is the most robust mature nonlinear video editor yeah. that's open source on linux period there's no yeah. like but <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that's their web-based app center, which do, it, it's just a curated list of some of their favorite software. It's not, you know, uh, thorough. It does, you know, uh, Bodai, it is based on apt and it does include the synaptic package manager. So you can download those apps as well from there or just so, install an apt install. Yeah. So at the end mm-hmm. of the day, what are we really bringing on top of, uh, and I, I ask this about everything that's Debian with a body yeah. kit on it. Well, it it's well, a very smooth experience. Cell. Is it is it yeah. more green? Is it more green than <laughs> Is it more green? <laughs> is it more green? Well, uh, there aren't that many distros actually out there with their their bases and with an enlightenment base. And so for those of us who love the enlightenment window manager, that's a nice thing and it's it's a uh, very minimal install. It doesn't have all the extra software. So um, you have to download that later, which is one of the reasons why it installs so quickly. And it's, it's you know, again, it's, it's like, like you're installing, um, more Debian. like you're installing Debian, but even, even quicker and lighter. At least on the install. <laughs> Faster than Debian not install when it's based on Debian? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's well, a uses, cool theory. Yeah, it uses the Ubuntu installer, which is really fast. <laughs> so what are you talking about in speed of uh, speed of what? Like base package? Because it's got a lot more stuff uh, from your base package installed on this than I would on a base Debian install. Yeah. Well, that's what's uh, amazing about and Debian, it. Debian, I mean, here's the other problem. Why do yeah. you include OpenOffice? Or LibreOffice, <laughs> I should say. That is because one of the reasons I really like Debian and I've been running Debian, is it completely stays out of your way. And that's why you see so many projects like Bode Linux and, you know, and Ubuntu yeah. and Pop. They're all based on Debian because Debian got the Debian part right, really, really right, except yeah, for LibreOffice and the default install. Like, <laughs> that drives me up the wall every single uh, yeah, time because I, I know. <laughs> deploy workstations and I'm like, why do we have this? Because that is a big, heavy program. And I'm like, all right. Whatever. It's great to see. Uh, this came from OMG <laughs> and Ubuntu. All the links will be in our show notes Yes. for this. Now, let's get back to the command line because maybe yes. this has happened to you. It's happened to me. Because <laughs> you think about it, how many times have you run, you know, copy, move, uh, DD, tar, gzip um, on something big? We're not talking about little, maybe even medium size, long enough to give you a pause where you go. Mm-hmm. Like, so you have a think. What's going on? Because you know what? After 30 seconds, after 30 seconds, what do you do? You're going to open up top or something like that. And you're like, is, is a, maybe look down at your hard drive lead. See if it's making the blinks. Well, there's a utility for this. I went looking for it because I was running a very long move operation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I was like, man, is this, I, I, intellectually, you know it's doing something. You do, but yeah. you want that visual <laughs> indication. Just sitting there. Just something. Let me know. I don't care. Just give me a red <laughs> blinky light, but they can do a little bit better. Yeah. With this, because this is going to give you your percentage progress for several of these utilities. Copy, move, DD, tar, G's up, guns up, cat, you name it. It can help you out. And look at this. Like. Something as simple as like, hey, this is how long this is going to take. Here's an mm-hmm. ETA. <laughs> this is brilliant. It's a progress bar. It's probably not as going to be as a robust, comprehensive, and accurate as a Windows 95 progress bar. That's a good thing. 
no. and you won't have the little colorful <laughs> file f- flying in the folder. <laughs> No, I know. I mean, it's criminal. We need a little ASCII file flying across yeah. our terminal. But this project was formerly known as Core Utils, and um, it just takes all the mystery out of uh, percentage estimates and time. I, I love it. I use it, and I just wanted to recommend it. It, I think, basically, yeah, this thing's on Fedora, Suzy, Mac OS, even, uh, of course, Arch. So, you know, my pack brothers and sisters can uh, mm-hmm. type that in. And Debian, just right out of the box, plug it in, it works, and it's real simple to use, even though it's a really tiny screenshot. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I actually originally used this in Debian, but it was in a uh, different name back then. <laughs> core Utils, right? Yeah, Core Utils Viewer or CV. And gosh, I like the new name Progress because it's easy to remember. In fact, recently I was thinking of installing this utility to see the progress of an ISO copy using the DD command to a flash drive. But I couldn't remember the the name of the program to install it. So progress makes sense. <laughs> One thing I want to try this is, um, I talked about this on show maybe last year. When just out of curiosity, this was like one of those like, hmm, I wonder if you can do DD over SSH. Oh, yeah. It requires it some. Tr- you should okay. be theoretically. You look at it. Yeah. And like, that should work. You can make it happen. There's some little minor trickery involved, but mm. this is something that I because the what I would be well, what I ended up doing. I don't have a progress bar for. It's a remote box, you know, mm. and I just it was just to get a disk image, you know, for automated backup. So it logs into the box, pulls it off. But yeah, having a percentage on that. Talk about things you're like, hmm, well, that's a 20 gig drive over SSH. That'll finish yeah. when it finishes. Maybe I'll come yeah. check on that tomorrow and see if it's done. <laughs> um, yeah, great tool for that. And, yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> happy to see it. Almost as Yay. excited as this next story that caught my eye because yeah. I was like, man, this is, this is like some next level retro nonsense, but it might be useful. Yeah, I thought this was so cool, then found it. So in 1981, when the IBM PC was introduced, Bill Gates said that 640 kilobytes of memory ought to be enough for anybody. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Supposedly. Allegedly. Like, Allegedly. I've been... Well, <laughs> if you're looking for a hobby, go look that up. Because you know that's something that you hear yeah. for the first time, and you're like, they really say that because that, that seems like a silly thing to say. And um, no one's been able to, he flat out denies it, first off. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I would flat out deny it <laughs> on that. But a couple of uh, websites, uh, larger websites like PC World, they've like tried to track down the origin of it. I'm not going to spoil Correct. anything for you. Mm-hmm. You go read it yourself and check it out. Yeah. So anyways, uh, that's, you know, what, a Chinese PC manufacturer recently recently built in a mini laptop, which has 64, 640 kilobytes of memory and an 8-bit 8088 4.77 megahertz processor, along with support for an optional 8087 math coprocessor processor to speed up those math computations. So this new book 8088 DOS system. (laughs) That's hard to say, (laughs) Ben. That's what they're calling it. The book 8088 DOS system was available from AliExpress for $201 and up, but it actually just recently sold out really quickly. So check back soon for hopefully more inventory. And I'm sure they're going to have more inventory because I think there was only a few hundred in that batch. So what what's cool is that it has support for MS-DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.0 or early earlier. It 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 would have a hard time running a modern day Linux, that's for sure. <laughs> so the the specs, it as I said earlier, it has an Intel 8088 chip, an IBM CGA graphics card, 640 kilobytes of memory. And a 16 color 640 by 200 pixel display. It does have a 512 megabyte compact flash card for storage and a USB port for peripherals, but don't expect to run new software on this little machine. 
It's especially made to run retro uh, DOS and Windows software. But it also the, has optional accessories, which include an OPL3 sound card module with our Yamaha sound chip in it, not unlike what, what some of the sound blasters used to run, an ISA expansion card connector, or an 8087 coprocessor. And the system costs, with all these add-ons, $275. Completely outrageous. Yes. <laughs> so, honestly, this looks... Like a fun little computer computer for running old DOS games and applications, you know, bare metal without the need to run emulation what, what software. What are you talking about, man? I'm going to put some VMs on there. We're, we're going to. It, it needs containers. <laughs> it needs containers. We need DOS pod. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's just so cool to see a company you know, using this old of of hardware to make a new laptop. <laughs> I want to support way. them. Great way to keep stuff out of a landfill. I mean, taking some spare stuff, yeah. stick it together, and like, ooh, that'd be neat to play with. And especially when you consider they have a development board over at 8086cpu.com. Look at that. Oh, yeah, that, look at that. Got a nice little MS mm -hmm. DOSCOM. They like putting their stickers on it. We got the three ISA slots. And you're like, oh, let's kind of mm -hmm. check it out. You can put the keyboard Very cool. on. You can build it yourself. A little monitor right there <laughs> on top. Oh, man. Pretty neat. Pretty <laughs> neat. Uh, now, Outside of just playing around with this, they're they're like one step off from being able to double the price and not make enough mm -hmm. of them. If they put yeah. a COM port on this thing, RS two thirty two port so running true. DOS and yeah. or like Windows three eleven because uh, the one <laughs> CNC machine locally that I'm still allowed to touch and it's relatively modern has a DOS laptop because that's the uh, software for the industrial control and like a lot of stuff's like that still like that there's still old 486s mm -hmm. kicking around on factory yeah. floors something like this i know people that buy stacks of them just to have yes. them as backups um maybe look back be... in stock i was looking at the aliexpress <laughs> thing it said they sold 119 so 119 wasn't, a, wasn't the big <laughs> run this was uh like hey i put these together got a nice little run what i hope we don't see is like round two at like 300 dollars or something like that right yeah yeah, definitely. So, but I was just I'm so impressed by this, Ben. <laughs> this is so, this is just so cool. I mean, I mean, I I actually have still have my, you know, original uh, IBM PC from back in 1981 that I can use to run this. But most people don't have those old machines hanging around. <laughs> no, this would be like that, but useful. Yeah, <laughs> and it's portable. It's portable. You can throw it at people. Try doing the that only, with your 1981 yeah, desktop. Yeah. You'd the only thing, it, only thing it needs, and I know you can run, you, you, I, I have uh, floppy drives that- You're going to say that, RGBs, right? No. <laughs> no, actually, I have floppy drives that run from USB, but to have a, a, a classic floppy drive <laughs> would be cool. <laughs> but yeah, you can just use USB one, but it's still not the same. <laughs> Uh, but yes, RGBs, it needs rainbow vomit. RGBs, and I want to make a dock for it that holds like a five and a quarter Bigfoot hard drive <laughs> that's going to be about that tall. Oh, like yeah. That. And uh, yeah, it jumps a little bit when it powers up. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My, <laughs> my full height uh, Seagate hard drives from Aerospace would be perfect for that. <laughs> It'd be great. It'd be yeah. just like it when it gets taken off across the desk. <laughs> or, or Micropolis. Micropolis is what the Deck Alpha used. <laughs> the, um, yeah, it's just a cool design. And it's it cheap. Is. Maybe they'll come back in stock. Uh, something to play I'm around hoping. with. Uh, relive those DOS ages. And yeah, Linux. Uh, 311.62 the linux <laughs> no i mean yes yeah, somebody's going to put linux on it but oh yeah absolutely and you can it? ssh <laughs> you know there's there's uh, you can use it as a terminal i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure it's got the isa expansion card on it so you, yeah you, you, the, will there's a way right exactly um, it's gonna happen i think of it yeah it'll, it'll be running doom with wi-fi on it now yes don't worry about it so there is that. Uh, before we get into something kind of similar, but not 8080, we're, we're going to talk about one of those fancy news, reduced instruction set mm -hmm. chips, mm -hmm. but in handheld form. I want to thank a couple of people. 
that have joined up this week. We got a little Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Teamcast. Got a couple of levels, a couple of things you can do to help out the show. If you want, if you feel like it, it'd be super awesome. We do appreciate it. And it keeps us ad free and all the other fun stuff. This is brought to you by, I don't have any like product to hold up. What would be a good product? Paper. Yes. Big, uh, big paper. <laughs> Sponsored by Big Paper. And Vendoodles. Vendoodles. Yep. Hey, that's worth a donation right there. <laughs> so, two new patrons this week. I uh, want to thank for joining Euthanasia and Wrath. Yay. Come hop in our Discord. I believe both of them have. Yes, they have. They have. Which is uh, <laughs> always fun to see. I'm like, oh, that's where everybody's hanging out. I'm like, yep, that's where we hang out. Don't tell anyone. And uh, that's where the other six days of the week, they get access to live and uncut versions of this show, MP3 podcast format, and early video versions, early access to things that I like to work on, up to and including. Mm. <laughs> I've been getting something out. I got, I got something out. <laughs> Look at that. Ooh. That is a PreSonus IO Station Ooh. 24C. So That's sweet, Finn. <laughs> you ladies and gentlemen are going to be taking a look at this before Buddy Oaks. You know, I might do a deboxing because I haven't even opened it up. Because Kaijori, Kai Dry, I, man, <laughs> K-Jory. KY I Lennox, think. KY Lennox, you know him, <laughs> yeah. you love him, been around in the community <laughs> forever, sent this in. That's, that's why. That took forever to write, my man, because oh, that's yeah, purple there it is. and I hadn't used that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, Jill, it ran. Oh, it did. So it, it ran, and it, it took me. I, I had to write it twice because I wrote it because it's a liquid shark marker, and you got to like shake them up and wait. And yeah, and I wrote it, drip. and I'm like, I'm like, I put it on. I'm like, yeah, it looks good, looks good. And I left, and I came back in here a couple hours later, and it looked all diseased. So I'm like, I didn't do a good job writing that. Aww. So I wiped it off and <laughs> did it again, and I left. Came back a couple. I was like, it did it. Then I clicked. I'm like, oh, it's running. That's why it looks all messed up and squiggly so i finally got yeah. it straightened out thank you no idea if this works on linux because we do a very very expensive project like we used to have to do in the old days uh we had to buy the stuff and find out mm -hmm. whether or not it worked on linux and we're still doing that in 2023 with audio interfaces because you never know this one's a little bit special it's a little bit different than what you would normally have uh you might be familiar with the control surfaces. That's what these things are over here. But this one has an audio interface built into the control surface. Oh, that's cool. And it's got a nice little oh, motorized sweet. fader. So if for any other reason, you'll be able to move the fader around with software on your desktop. There you go. Like, how cool is that? Oh, that's and nice. Thank you, Kai Linux. I'm thinking <laughs> this is going to be a fun one because the kids are playing around with their Go XLRs, right? It's yeah. Got the beat buttons. I could probably show you how to make one of those with this. And better yet, you can actually use this as a production controller inside of Audor, inside of Reaper, inside of Bitvig. And it has a lot more uses than a swear button. So stay tuned. <laughs> Haven't even opened the box. Okay, I've opened the box to make sure there was something in it. I'll go that far, but that's as far as I got. There, there is the thing inside of it. Thank you very much. Oh, wonderful. Kajori. Also, thank you again, Euthanasia and Graf and yeah. Mac Geek with Euthanasia. a 20-month resub. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Uh, come hang out with me and Jill on Tuesdays and Fridays. We do the track mania, mm -hmm. which is fun. And mm -hmm. even when we get a swap maps out at the end, but we get everything sorted out, we got a private yeah. uh, track mania server. It's a game from 2013. It's old. It runs on a potato. You got a potato. Don't worry, man. It, it's uh, <laughs> carbs are good. Starch is great for you. And uh, we have a good time with that on Tuesdays and Fridays. All of that is in our Discord track manias and channel. All the bits you need. To get started mm -hmm. and uh jordan does streams on thursdays he's finished strange brigade so we don't know what's next yeah true <laughs> he was talking about portal 2 possibly <laughs> possibly speaking of portal 2 we got an update to a very popular or at least hyper squirrely portal mod conversion that we're going to be talking about on linux gamecast oh yes Weekly. yes yes yeah oh. <laughs> we'll let you know about mm -hmm. that in the future. So uh, let's talk about building a handheld PC. Why? Because it's something we all want to do at some point for whatever reason. We don't know why we want to do it, but you're like, man, I bet I could build a little portable. And that's just what we had. And this is not called the deck kitty. No, <laughs> it's 
the ductility. <laughs> There's other things I've misread that as as well. But yeah, I'll let I know. you use your imagination. <laughs> this goes all the way through general idea. And that, I was like, oh, another and I scroll down, I'm like, look, there's two 18650s. I'm like, oh, I've been at that phase of many a project. I'm like, all right, can I build a charge controller? Turns out you can. Uh, sometimes the best palm top, because this guy, he's like, man, I, I was a fan of, you remember palm tops? Palm? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, man, right? Yeah, I love and my palm. <laughs> he wanted one that he could use himself. And the only downside to this, we're go we're going to get somewhere. So what is this? It's using, you see the screen there, it's 800 by 480, which is touch, that's the BTT Pad 5, which is pretty cool. And again, it's powered by the two 18650s. The only downside to this, the only, he's got the fleer out. I mean, he's doing the engineering thing. It's like, <laughs> is it going to melt? Which is, the answer is usually yes. And I love seeing stuff like that. Um, not melting, but just taking that. He custom designed MOSFET, because the first one looked a bit squirrely. Let me see. I think it's down here. Yeah, there it is. Look at that little green chunk. It's like, Aww. that looks a bit industrial, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. That's Just cool. a little bit. And uh, then I scroll down. I was like, oh, it looks like some of my soldering here on the right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yep. Um, so somebody after my own art 3D printed cases talks about you need to check things when, uh, especially like battery compartments and containers for 3D, because you get to deal with the flux and you don't want an 18650 lithium ion cell going up because all you can do at that point is wait for it to go out um here's some of the earlier prototypes that's looking a bit rough but i mean all the parts are there the wires are in one piece this guy after my own heart he's like hey i want a little charging lead what's the easiest way to do that fishing line mm -hmm. there's your cheapest fiber optics that you can get you get some fishing line clip it glue it stick it on the top <sighs> look charge light done yeah amazing Amazing. Love That's it. awesome. <laughs> and look at it. Like, I'd carry that around. Oh, like, absolutely, Ben. It's got a nice little screen on it, too. Um, and I, I think this is just, it's, it's one of the nicest looking Raspberry Pi Cyberdeck palm tops. Thus the name, Dectility. So <laughs> it's a short for Cyberdeck. <laughs> or, I guess, Steam Deck in modern terms. <laughs> what was but the... Cyberdeck. Uh... <laughs> And um, what's interesting, Vin, is that it was uh, one of his inspirations was over at uh, uh, Clockwork Pi, which we've talked about before. They're uh, portable uh, cyber decks and uh, computers. And it was uh, based off the U console, but, but it wasn't available yet. So he made his own. Oh, That's I love so it. cool. <laughs> He's even got a thing on naming your project matters. While Dectility yeah. is probably not the best <laughs> name out there, it's a good name because it's easy to remember. Fair enough. Like, what was that weird name thing? And it's unique. An online search. Yeah, you can use ChatGPT to help you find a good name. Probably. Dectility refers to ductility utility, where ductility mm -hmm. is a wink <laughs> towards the way. He's welder too. Hey, neat. Uh, yeah, a, that makes sense. <laughs> there's a. Uh, GitHub with all this uh, Arduino, but here's here's the like the womp, womp sad part, which is ah, man, this, is, this irritates me more than it should. The Raspberry Pi requires its compute module, its compute module for, mm -hmm. so it might as well not exist. You can't make one of these. Like you can't even buy one. You cannot buy. You can't even get a yeah. scalped compute module for right now. You either have one later yeah. on, but the uh, GitHub has a full bill of materials, everything that you need. To uh, maybe one day put a compute module for it. Yeah, wow. Nice. Which is the only downside. And I hate mm -hmm. having to bring that up. That bugs I me. know. I know. Hope, hopefully, by the end of the year, we won't have to <laughs> make excuses. <laughs> but this is it. Like, do you really want like four year old <laughs> compute modules, though? Yeah. I think yeah. that's going to be one of the big things coming back to it. Like, do you really want a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig at this point? Like, that, that's old tech, man. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be neat if they were back in stock for people who already have Raspberry Pis, but like, I, I kind of want a Raspberry Pi 5 something. And, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe make it rock chip powered and like everything else because those are yeah, yeah. good. So, apply. <laughs> okay, everyone. Running a little bit long, but we had a lot to get through. And, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to call it call a it day, day, an evening, <laughs> a morning, wherever you're at. So let's bring up music. Yeah. And roll some Ooh, credits. I, I like the new music, Ben. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I'll change cool. it next week. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and thank you again to Euthanasia and Graf, our new new patrons, and to Kai Linux for the awesome uh, awesome addition for Ven Studio. Twenty four C. <laughs> 24 <laughs> C. The thing. I don't have words for it yet. Yeah. The thing. <laughs> Thank you to our wonderful patrons. Many of them are in chat right now, including uh, Scott Scoots, Scott Machad, Machad. Strider, <laughs> Machod. <laughs> I'm sorry, Machod. Scott. I just messed up Machod your name. Machad and Machod. All right. Maybe on the third try. Episode 376. <laughs> Beautiful people, we will see you next week. Until then, have a great one. Bye, everyone. And I'm totally going to change this song. Yeah. <laughs>